Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to emulate Diddy Kong Racing at 4K in widescreen at 60 frames a second. First, you're gonna to wanna to download Project 64 like I have here. Uh, the link is in the description if you don't already have it. You can skip forward if you already know this part. Just click the top link uh, to download the installer and then your browser is probably gonna bitch about it. You're just gonna click on the download and then click download unverified file, assuming that you're cool with this whole thing. If you're not, that's fine too. Now you're just gonna go to the download location and open up the install file. Click run, click next, 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 and finish. Then Project 64 is gonna open. It's gonna ask you for your game directory where you have your ROMs. Uh, you're gonna find it, click okay, click okay again, and now you should see your list of ROMs. And then you need a copy of Diddy Kong Racing, which is unfortunately up to you to get your hands on. Um, you do wanna make sure that you have version 1.0. I believe that's the only version you can get 60 frames a second with. Once you've got that, we're gonna go ahead and open up the game. And the way that we're gonna do 60 frames a second on this game is by uh, putting in game shark codes. With emulation, oftentimes that's the only way to like mod a game. So you're gonna wanna come up to system up here and in system, we're gonna go down to cheats. And once we're in here, we're gonna see some of the cheats that come with the emulator, uh, as well as some that I've already inputted, but just ignore these, we're gonna input our own from scratch. Now just come over to this little right arrow button, I've definitely forgotten where that was many times, and when you tap that, it's basically gonna open up uh, the portion of the window where we can add new cheats. So go ahead and press this new cheat button, and uh, we're just gonna give it a name, you know, uh, 60 FPS, whatever you wanna name it. And then we're gonna uh, go to our cheat codes, which are listed in the description. And basically for the 60 FPS mod, we're just gonna select all these lines of code, copy them, and then bring them into the code section here, paste them, and then we're gonna hit add cheat. And now our cheat appears in the list and we can just go ahead and check the box for that. Now we're just gonna repeat the process, hit new cheat again, copy these two lines of code, type in our name. Uh, this is for uh, HD computer players, paste the code in and hit add cheat. Then go ahead and check the box. So this cheat basically means that uh, these little freaks are gonna look normal from any distance instead of looking like fucking traffic cones. Now you can close this box and we're gonna come back up to system and in system, we're gonna to go to reset and then we're gonna hit soft reset or you can just tap F1. This should be enough uh, to initialize the cheats, but uh, you can always try a hard reset or close and reopen Project 64 if you just really wanna make sure. Oftentimes when you run into problems with modding like this, you know, a good reset is all it needs. I would also go back into system and then back into cheats just to make sure that your cheats are checked and didn't for some reason get unchecked in the process of resetting or restarting. So now we're gonna start the game. You're gonna see that your furry little friends here are not quite correct in the way that they behave themselves on this screen, but uh, it should be the only graphical bug that you run into as a result of the 60 FPS mod. So we are running at 60 frames now. Um, I've noticed that in windowed mode, it's not as noticeable. So it's not until you full screen the game by holding Alt and hitting Enter that you're gonna get the full experience. And here's a graphical bug related to the widescreen mode. When the pinhole camera opened up at the beginning of the scene, uh, it doesn't actually go away, so you can see it in the corners right now. Um, but as soon as you go into a world, uh, it'll be gone. Uh, the only time that'll show is just when you first start the game and you're in uh, the little lobby area. So as you'll see, when I come back out, it's gone, we're all good. But yeah, so you should be noticing uh, that the the smoothness of the frame rate is uh, much more noticeable now in full screen. And uh, we'll take a look uh, at one of the levels here. Now, the main thing to note about the 60 FPS mod is that the game doesn't really play the same. It, um, uh, you know, I've done some tests and I don't think that it's running at twice the speed, you know, because the original is 30 frames and now we're at 60 frames. I don't think that's what's happening, uh, but what I do believe is happening is that the game is receiving 
your controller inputs twice as often. So the game feels really sensitive, way more sensitive than you're used to if, if you're familiar with the game. Um, so you might notice that I'm like really sliding around the track quite a lot because every time you, you push a direction, he's gonna really slide from side to side much faster, almost like he's on ice. And um, that's just sort of, you know, par for the course with this mod, with this game in particular. Um, but I've beaten the game uh, with this with this turned on and I really enjoy it. You get used to it. And for me, it's just kind of a, it's a new way to experience a game, you know, that I have loved for years, you know. Um, it does feel different, uh, but it is what it is. You will also need to turn off the mod and restart the emulator uh, when you fight the walrus for the second time. The first time should be fine. And probably both uh, fights with the octopus. And while we're on that subject, something you want to be careful with when opening and closing an emulator is that there's two ways to save any given game. There's the way that the game natively saves, just like it did on the original console, but then there's uh, using save states within the emulator. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, stay to the end and I'll explain it further. Now let's set up uh, the 4K and widescreen. Uh, we're gonna go up to options here and then we're just gonna go down to uh, graphics settings. And once we're in here, uh, you're gonna wanna set your full screen resolution, which should be the resolution of your monitor. Uh, you can sometimes get an error that will crash Project 64 uh, when switching to or from full screen if your resolution isn't set properly. Uh, set the refresh rate of your monitor. And then you're gonna set the windowed resolution, which should just be something that's smaller than your monitor's resolution. It's just whatever the size the window's gonna be when it's not full screened. Then to get the 16 by nine aspect ratio or whatever aspect ratio your monitor is, you're gonna set the aspect ratio to try to adjust game to fit, which if the game supports it, which this game does, it should just expand the camera out to fill your screen so you'll have extra space on either side. If your screen is 16 by nine though, you can also just select 16 by nine in this menu. Now let's hit save and close and let's go up to options and input settings. And in here you can change what all the buttons do on your controller. You can save profiles for specific games. You can load those profiles. Then when you're done, I would click save as opposed to use. Uh, sometimes that can be a little finicky. So back to what I was warning you about earlier with saving and loading. Now with Diddy Kong Racing, the game auto saves every time you beat a level. So you basically just wanna remember that if you save and then load your state in the emulator, that's gonna override the in-game save system. For example, if you collect 47 balloons, that's going to get saved to your in-game profile. And when you open up the emulator again, you're going to want to load your save file through the in-game load system. But let's say earlier when you only had 17 balloons, you had used the save state function, forgotten all about it. And by now you've gotten all the way to 47 balloons and you decide to try and load with your save state, you're going to be back with 17 balloons because that's where you last saved your state in the emulator. If this happens, I would close the emulator fast because then if the game decides decides to autosave again, you're boned. Now, both your save state and the in-game save file have you at 17 balloons. Save states can be really useful and I use them all the time. Just make sure that you are careful to remember when you last saved before deciding to load. And you're off to the races, man. You're, you're gonna have some, some hot Diddy Kong fun. 